why is the portrait so important? Well, I think the idea of the portrait as the constructed image of somebody, in other words, portraits don't come about by chance, they come about because somebody intended to make an image of somebody else. And of course, that implies a purpose, there was a reason for a portrait. Uh, most of the portrait, portraits that we have in the National Portrait Gallery's collection are, if you like, portraits of honour, although there may also be some portraits that were, came about as sort of portraits of affection or came about originally for other reasons. Um, in other words, portraits give us a link back in history to important people, but they also give us a way of understanding the ways in which those people have been understood, been presented or represented, and that's really important in cultural and historical understanding. Um, the National Portrait Gallery has had tremendous success in recent years in attracting new audiences. The figures are very impressive. Um, how have you done that? And, and are there any particular examples of your work in this area of which you're particularly proud? Well, I think we are. We've just clocked up another new record for, for the calendar year 2009. We've just got up to 1.96 million visits, which is, which is terrific. I mean, in these rather difficult times, I think we are very aware that actually more people want to come and find things that they want to do that are engaging, that are interesting, that they want to find out about, they want to be stimulated. It isn't, it isn't an entertainment element, but actually there's also a kind of learning element that's right, right at the centre of what we're doing. And I think that is actually part of what's in the numbers. People want to come to interesting things, however different they, they, they think they'll be. Um, there are obviously a number of causes in your recent successes, but I wonder what, what are the importance of your research activities? What role do they play? Research is really at the centre of everything we do, because if you've got a collection of portraits, and we've got some 10,000 portraits in our primary collection, and then another 300,000 in our reference collection, the fact that they can be understood by us, and then of course understood by everybody else, they are the nation's portraits to be uh, used in lots of different ways, is absolutely critical. So the first thing is about the information and the kind of core knowledge, but after that, the deeper understanding of the place of portraiture, and indeed on one hand, so to speak, technical, and on the other hand, interpretive. Um, the fact that our curatorial team can be developing research projects and taking those forward is absolutely crucial, and it's crucial as to how we share it. So we see it in the exploring of different areas of portraiture. It leads into exhibitions, it leads into the new displays, uh, it leads into the very ways in which we encourage the public as diverse as possible to think about what they find in the collection themselves. But good research is right at the heart of everything. We've been uh, very pleased to be recognised by the Arts and, New, Arts and New Managers Research Council as one of the IROs, one of the independent research organisations, and that, that status when the council was formed, the fact that museums and galleries were seen as that was very, very important to a number of us on the national museums, um, because in a sense we'd always been arguing that we were doing national and international level of research, and we've often had collaborations with different universities and academic departments, and that's something of course that with the AHRC support we've been keen to continue and develop. Um, but how do you see the work of the gallery developing in an age where, in a sense, we can all be portraitists and we can all be self-portraitists? What, what does that do to the notion of the, the portrait and what does that do to the notion of the National Portrait Gallery? Well, everybody, you know, everybody takes uh, images on their mobile phone, everybody, you know, many, many people have cameras in the Western world and beyond, and everybody wants to share portraits, they share the moment, they, and in some ways that's very like what I referred to as a kind of portrait of affection. It's, it's the idea of recording a moment, it's recording friendships, it's re recording colleague uh, relationships as well. And it's a tremendously positive thing. Actually, in contrast, part of what I think makes us stronger is saying, well, that's great, but it's not necessarily the full thing that is a portrait. The idea of an actual portrait is something more considered than a snapshot. It's more considered than just catching that flick of a moment on your iPhone. And the idea that we still promote both painted portraiture and sculpted portraiture, we have our BP Portrait Award, I mean each year some 2,000 artists put in and we judge an international competition of the very best of contemporary painted portraiture. And I oversee a process which means we select down to whatever it is, some 55 portraits that we can include in the exhibition. What you're seeing there is a fantastic skill and a fantastic artistry. So in some ways, as portrait imagery almost gets to be more ubiquitous around the world and circulated ever faster. I think that the sort of sense of a kind of slow portrait and the detail of a portrait and the artistry of a portrait becomes even more important. And part of our role 
is to help people understand why that matters, why that might be interesting. What is the long-term significance of the portrayal of particular people or particular circumstances? How do you see the National Portrait Gallery, Gallery developing in the coming years? Where would you like to see it in five or ten years? Well, I think one of the things I hope is that the digital agenda will absolutely strive forward. Now, obviously, that depends on finding resources, and that's always tricky in an age and period that's competitive for resources in the public arena. But um, I'm certain that we'll continue, as we have, to digitise our collection. We've now got about half our collection online. There's about now about 70,000 images available online. We, last year, I think we had 17 million visits uh, to our website. But I think that'll go up by large amounts. And I think we'll see that the uses to which that collection is put are infinitely various. So it won't be about what just what we say, oh, it could be used for this, that bit of history, or that bit of scientific understanding, or contributing to that bit of cultural uh, learning. It'll be much, much more various than that. So I think in kind of full crystal ball, it's not that we will suddenly become a portrait gallery with lots of art stations or lots of additional physical facilities. I think it's much, much more about collaboration, working with other galleries and museums, working with other kinds of locations, as we already do with the National Trust, but maybe there'll be more opportunities of that kind to share the collection in the future. And I think we'll be very, very keen to do that. Well, we look forward to your progress in the future. Sandy Nan, thank you very much. Thank you very much.